So building better badass cars. I actually had a buddy um, the other day who read that title. And uh, it's like, man, that's a, that's a pretty badass title. You're going to have a lot to live up to. And it seems like that's, that's definitely the case. He looked over me at me um, afterwards and was just like, does it live up to it, man? <laughs> and I, you know, I really hope it does. Um, this talk is going to be a little bit more high level. It's not going to go down into the details of the, the data science that, we, that we've been working on and doing um, for manufacturing. Um, and yeah, so that's that. Uh, my name is Peter Bushbacher. I am one of the lead analytics developers for the manufacturing sphere at General Motors. Um, and so what that kind of entails is that I do a lot of the, the back end, the ETL development. Um, so I bring in a lot of the information, the data that we're collecting from the manufacturing plant floors. I bring that into our central environment, and then I build reporting analytics on top of that. Um, and that includes uh, some of the data science that we do. Um, so this car, this specific car, the Camaro ZL1, I believe it was announced in 2016. And this is my definition of a badass car. It's got uh, 650 pound-to-foot torque, and I think it's around 3.5 seconds, zero to 60. And it's really the, like, the essence of a track car. I mean, look at that thing. It looks mean, it looks badass, it's ready to go. And that, I think, is what General Motors is pushing towards, building safer, more quality, um, and badass cars on the whole. Um, and so, by a show of hands, how many of you actually know uh, anything about the, uh, the manufacturing process for a car? Just raise your hand. Oh, quite a few of you. Yeah. Great, great. Um, yeah, so you know then that it is a very complex and difficult process. Um, so, modern cars are basically just an amalgamation of, you know, thousands of different parts. The average car is built with around 30,000 parts, and trucks can sometimes be made with around 40,000 parts. So all of these individual and unique parts, around 10,000 of them are assembled in plants, so the process itself is pretty difficult. So you would imagine then that we'd be collecting uh, lots of interesting data um, on the, the entire manufacturing process so that we understand you know, where we're failing, where we're um, you know, having lots of downtime, and how we can increase throughput throughout this process. Um, and so to kind of give a little bit of con contrast, the average phone is made up of about you know, 350 different parts um, and around 34 different specific components. So when we're talking about the scale of manufacturing, um, a car requires a lot more space. So sometimes uh, when a engineer needs to go check on something within the manufacturing plant, you might have to walk you know, a mile or two to actually get to the part where we have a failure. Um, and so that scale uh, diff uh, makes the process quite difficult. And you know, having the 60x multiplier of, of parts compared to something like an iPhone um, also increases the difficulty and it almost provides a, an exponential factor of difficulty in the production of, uh, of cars. And so, like I said, you would think we would be collecting all of this data um, and creating sense of it to decrease our downtime, improve quality, um, and you know, increase the safety of our cars. And we are doing that. That is definitely something that we're doing. Um, but in the past, the auto manufacturers have been um, you know, a little bit behind with uh, data collection and understanding data. Um, and this is the case. Uh, uh, and by looking at this uh, single picture, you might you know, kind of get a sense of what it was actually like uh, 10, 15 years ago. So if um, an auto manufacturer wanted to know how many cars were actually produced within a single day at a manufacturing plant, there would be a paper receipt that would um, be printed out that would show all of the, the separate cars that were uh, produced. And you would actually have to go in and count them up to understand how many cars you developed in a single day. So if you wanted to see, you know, um, across all, you know, 50 plants or so, let's say 50 plants in the entire globe, how many cars we produced in one day? Well, you'd have to have someone go down, manually get the receipt, count all the cars, um, add that up, 
and then send it to a central system where um, you know someone in finance would just add everything up and send it to an executive. So really manual process, not effective, and that is how a lot of things used to be. Um, and we are working here at the Innovation Center and throughout our centers in the U.S. Uh, to kind of disrupt this and continually improve our processes and our reporting and our analysis. So this is um, our manufacturing worker. Uh, we'll just call him Joe for now. So Joe is, has been sad in the past because he doesn't have any analysis for how he can improve the product. Um, and, you know, this is a real issue. Um, and so the question then is, how can we make Joe happy? Um, and so as developers, and especially in data science, there is um, data science and analytics um, and data in general, there is sort of a bias towards um, inflating complexity of what we are doing um, and conflating ideas together, um, you know, for a, a superimposed ideal of, of what's going on and what we are developing. And so that's where this picture comes in. So we have, uh, in our development process, we have, you know, lots of different requirements, lots of different data, and especially in a manufacturing plant, you have thousands of robots, thousands of controllers that are all doing different things, right? And it's looking at all of this and finding the, the nuggets of truth, the, the actual value within the data that's difficult. And so what we're looking for is this $2 million bear um, within the pile of toys. And I actually, I looked this up. This is a real bear. Um, you can view it in South Korea in the Jeju Stuffed Bear Museum. Um, but, uh, I mean, that idea is kind of mind-blowing to me. Um, so, yeah, so uh, we were approached um, recently by some of our manufacturing partners to develop a reporting suite for the body shop, specifically for this new truck. Um, that is, uh, has come out this year. So this is the new Chevy Silverado. It's the, the Trail Boss edition. And this is also another example of what I believe is just a badass car. Um, you know, you can take this thing off-roading, nothing's going to hamper it. And so we were approached by our manufacturing partner to come in and develop a reporting suite for the body shop. So for those of you that know what the body shop is, it's where a lot of the welding, um, joining, uh, dispense, um, and, and all of that comes together. And so um, welding, self-explanatory, you have welding robots. Um, there are different types of welding, but that's the, the basic idea is that you're joining pieces of metal together. Dispense, uh, same thing, using um, composites to, to bring different pieces of metal or plastic together. And so the body shop is where that all occurs. Um, and traditionally, engineers have not been able to uh, view data from the body shop in a centralized location, or if so, the visibility of data has been um, very scarce. So an example of dispense is that an, an, an engineer, uh, if something goes uh, wrong, would have to go down and manually plug into a robot, um, extract the data, and then perform their own analysis on it, uh, which is not effective. And, and so for us, uh, what our success is dependent upon is to have a effective solution for these engineers. Uh, one of the biggest issues, though, is that, um, you know, as developers, right, we have a lot of expectations coming in from our business users and uh, a lot of different requirements uh, coming in as well. So going back to the picture of the, uh, the room that's cluttered with toys, we're having um, lots of people coming in right, and, and saying lots of SMEs and business users and engineers coming in and saying, well, we need all of this. Uh, well, that's not realistic in a short period of time. And when something is so time sensitive, and also when it's not, right, you're looking to create effective solutions that provide the, the single answers that the engineers actually need. And so that drives to um, our development process and what our development process looks like is uh, providing effective uh, resources for our um, developers to, to move forward. So we asked ourselves, you know, what would this problem and solution look like if it was in its simplest form? And, you know, this is a really simple question to ask. 
Um, and it's one that we often ask uh, maybe at the beginning of a project or at the beginning of our analysis. Um, but we don't ask it continually going forward. And so um, it sounds like this is a simple solution, and it is. Uh, but it's something that can be applied continually throughout the development process and is important to apply um, and that often gets uh, neglected. So what we're driving towards is the, the nice little Pareto chart. We're looking for the 80% of value for the 20% of work. Um, and this is, this is really the case for uh, this specific instance that uh, we were able to um, abstract and uh, narrow down, focus on to the uh, actual value. So uh, one specific instance was with welding. Um, welding is really defined by, um, by how well, so the weld itself is defined by a few different factors, but one of the greatest factors is, uh, is called C factor. And C factor is an analysis of um, how well the weld was actually performed based off of uh, welding time um, as well as energy throughput through the weld. Um, and so we built our analyses using BIML. Um, we used Anaconda as a proof of concept for some of our analysis. Uh, and then we used SQL Server and Tableau to bring this data to our users. And so uh, BIML um, essentially allows us to automate a framework for our ETL processes. Uh, we are streaming data from the plant floor uh, through XML files. We're parsing that out. And then um, we're using BIML to abstract that into uh, SSIS packages that load data into our SQL Server environment. Um, Anaconda is used as a, uh, a proof of concept tool for some of the data science and analytics that we're driving towards. And then we, uh, we essentially recreate that in our Tableau environment and push towards better understanding and better data for our users. So our Anaconda proof of concept focuses on anomaly detection and cycle time degradation. So essentially, uh, you know, is something separate from the rest and why? Um, you know, what is going on there? And uh, cycle time degradation. So looking at our um, process overall over time and, you know, how our um, maybe welding um, or uh, how our dispense controllers are functioning over time and how that uh, is degrading and creating a faulty processes within the manufacturing plant. And so what we built was this BIML SSIS ETL framework and then uh, the Tableau reporting with custom analytics. So we took our Anaconda POC and then redeveloped that into a uh, SQL Server, um, creating just uh, nice little algorithms um, that come up well and are easily reported to uh, our business users through uh, emails and reports that they can view online. And so by asking this uh, single question, right, uh, what would this problem and solution look like if it was in its simplest form, we were able to take a 12-month process, you know, uh, normally a 12-month process, and we were able to uh, narrow that down into about a three-month development solution. Um, and this is just like our specific instance, what we were able to do, but I, I truly believe that looking for simpler solutions on a day-to-day -day basis and driving that towards your business users is a very key and critical component of success if you want to move quickly. And so this has real-world applications. We've used this in uh, our body shop, uh, but we've also used this in uh, stamping and enterprise asset management on the whole. So uh, um, for stamping, we've used this to uh, likewise look at cycle time um, degradation as well as um, Sound, uh, so we've looked at sound analytics, um, and if you haven't seen a stamping machine, go look it up, because they are just insane monstrosities that uh, really shake the earth when they, when they work. Um, and then asset management, so looking at our assets on the whole and understanding them across the board. You know, when you're dealing with um, $50 billion worth of assets, uh, it can sometimes be 
difficult to track all of that. Um, and we're using the same standard to drive success in asset management. Um, and so what our results were is our effectivity of work is up. So we're working better. We're driving towards quicker solutions, um, more granular solutions that uh, are driven towards success, right? And uh, specifically in the manufacturing plants, you know, our faults are down um, and downtime is down as well. So we're uh, helping to decrease manufacturing issues and we're also increasing how we work um, at a faster pace. And so how you can bring this to your work um, is by using simplification heuristics, right? So the, the question that I stated um, in the middle of the presentation uh, really drives towards this. But it's, it's something else. Um, you know, there are other questions that you can ask yourself that drive towards similar, uh, uh, similar products. And uh, using the right tools. So in this instance, we used Anaconda to uh, proof of concept our analysis. We used Tableau to report to our users, and we used Bimmel to create a framework. Um, and uh, those tools worked really well for us. So simplifying and then using the right tools to simplify that process as well uh, is incredibly important and uh, you know, helps the overall development time uh, moves smoothly. Um, and what you should take with you, so question till you find the simplest solution, um, but then also build this into an everyday framework. It's one thing to ask something like this at the beginning of a development process, right? But over time, uh, requirements inflate, uh, data inflates, uh, the information that we take on inflates, and so that turns into a more complex solution. So bringing this into your everyday development framework. Um, and that is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Um, and if you all have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer.